don't worry about being perfect about getting things done. Don't worry about perfection. He's like, just go out there and make mistakes because you're going to learn from those mistakes and grow and become better. And there's a good reason why he's so successful in the business that he does is because he doesn't allow trying to be perfect or, or try to get all the greatest action plans set up and, you know, uh, Oh, hang on a second. I need to go paint my toenails first. (laughs) No, (laughs) which is important by the way. I want to, to this i hope you have too um why don't you yeah. do this before we get into it and as people are coming in uh please and leaving this out, let's show you here. <laughs> what what happened and, and leaving <laughs> They're like, and leaving okay. get out of here see you later this guy uh, has had way too much caffeine today yes Good way news. too much caffeine i've only had two cups and it was this morning we need to re-up <laughs> So, so Dale, tell our Desnation audience just a little bit more background about who you are, what you do, so they can get a little more info on you. Go ahead, brother. I'm going to share this out. Well, uh, so uh, my story, we're just going to go Reader's Digest because, man, we're going to have do a lot of fun. We're going to have some fun today. Yeah. Yes. As you mentioned, I am a DIY publishing advocate. I like to say that because there's a lot of people out there calling themselves experts and gurus and this and that, and they really try to put themselves higher than what they are. What I like to tell people is what I'm excited about. I love reading and I love writing and I love publishing books. I know it sounds weird. Some people would be like, why do you want to do that? It's because that's something that I've been passionate about since I was a kid. So now that I actually am, you know, in my 40s, I'm living my dream and I want to espouse that. I want to share that with everybody in the world and tell them this is a lot of fun. And hey, it may not be for everybody. And it isn't. You and I can both agree on that. Yeah. So that's why I say DIY publishing advocate. But anyway, I've been doing this for the better part of, man, it's been almost four years now. What wow. Where's time been going? Where well, has it um, been going? I mean, I was just, it's so funny you say that, Dale, because I literally was telling my students, so I teach a business writing class on Fridays. I was literally telling them today, I can't believe, like Christmas is going to be here tomorrow. Like it's it, insane where 2017 is gone. Yeah, yeah it's, it's nuts. It's so, it's going so fast. And I'll tell you, that's one of the really cool things about being an entrepreneur and self-employed like I am is that lifestyle I get to have, that freedom that I get to have. And that's why I really want to try to tell people, you know, yeah, you can make uh, $10,000 overnight if you want to, and you can try to scam and work the system and things like that. But if you look at the long game and you really work it, you right. will allow yourself a certain freedom. My wife and I just got back from Orlando last week. I got a chance to go down and, and spend some time with some friends, got to see some friends live a dream down in Orlando at Universal Studios. Oh, cool. Uh, I got to do do so much great things. And that's what has, what self-publishing has done for me. And so that's where I had put together the YouTube channel a little over a year ago. And I wanted to share this. There was never in the back of my mind, like, oh, I'm going to make thousands of dollars in ad revenue. You and I both know that I was rougher than sandpaper when we started out. <laughs> exactly. You know, not family friendly. You yeah. know, you fast forward some time later, I just, just decided, I'm like, okay, there was too many, there was too much ambiguity. A lot of people were either A, taking me too seriously with the content I was putting out because it was all comedy, but it was based on self-publishing. So I was, you know, poking fun jokes, but people were taking it seriously. And some of them were, Taking me literally where I'd be like, you know, yeah, I use review swap because it's good for you. See? Yeah. And (laughs) and it was, it just, it it was bad. So, and on top of that, I think, you know, um, writing as well as writing very good, compelling and interesting and comedic type content is time consuming and it's draining. And what I started to say was, okay, I need to really abbreviate this down. I want to get out there a very serious message because I want people to have the same freedom and the same opportunities that I have wherever they are in the world, be it the United States, be it over in India, be it over in the United Kingdom, all over the world, because this is an amazing opportunity. And we're in a really amazing age right now. I think we are so fortunate. And the kids that are coming up in this that are just, it's their new norm. 
it's the new norm. Like to me, I remember like technology to me, it was playing tech football on like those gigantic like devices. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Of course I do. <laughs> yeah. Dale and I are the same age too. In case you're wondering, we're both 41 and, and, uh, and we both come from the same era, grew up on the same stuff. So I remember, Oh my God, I, you remember Contra and, and yep. remember how big, Remember how big, like, actual, what happened to arcades, dude? There's, like, no such thing as arcades. Oh, anymore. man. Arc- Actually, they're starting to make a comeback, man. You, Are they? You need to come on out. Get from the West Coast. You come on out here to the Midwest. Let me take you. There's actually three different adult arcade bars. Now, oh, wow. don't, don't get it wrong. It's not like they're strippers or crazy things like that. Get the sensor <laughs> button ready. Okay. Uh, but no, really, actually, it's it's uh, there are bars that actually have old school video games in them. Oh wow! And I can't tell you how much fun I've gone. A few birthdays with some of my in laws, which my in laws love them. They're fantastic. They'll take me out and we'll have like a couple of drinks. Mine being like you know like a diet coke. Watch out! I'm living life dangerously. <laughs> He's living dangerously. <laughs> I was just like, you know, are we going to do some Coke tonight? And everybody's just like, Dale, what the hell? And I'm like, no, no. I mean, like, like Coke, like drink Coke. And they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, I was like, we're going to go other Coke. Wild. The other Coke. <laughs> the other Coke. Yeah, yeah. No, Lord knows I don't need that. Hello. Uh, <laughs> no, neither of us. Neither of us need that. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah, my heart uh, probably already had, takes enough as it is. Yeah. But, you know, the arcades, though, are, are wonderful. So they actually have classics like Donkey oh. Kong. Um burger time burger time man whatever happened oh, to that oh yeah gosh yes. those, those so, are, yeah, i want to just i want to just really quickly isn't dale awesome guys give us some emojis give us some likes and please share it out i just want to mention a few people coming in right now in the comments Sweet. brie brie palmer's in the house so nice to see you brie thank you barb gord is in the house how has dale's oh gord already has a question look at this yes okay, look at gord before we before we get into that i just want to say really quickly dale mm-hmm. being that you're in the kind of publishing domain yeah this is something that i kind of grapple with like i pretty much uh, like i feel like the transition because it's it's not that different and I, and i wonder what your thoughts are on this the transition and i don't even know if the transition is the right word i think that video is becoming the predominant form of communication in the 21st century if it hasn't already i love creating content in video form especially since like you oh, yeah. said we're living in an era where the tech barrier to entry is literally a goose egg it's nothing there is no tech barrier to entry anybody yep. can really create content anywhere at any time if they have a connection even if they don't have a connection right they can just create it and edit it later do you think, see, I always thought that writing, the principles of really effective writing, they really translated well, especially to YouTube. But I mean, most, I think even live streaming too. Every, most people who are watching, I was talking to Dale earlier, I'm a complete live stream nut job. I love <laughs> live streaming. I think it's a powerful tool. I think yeah. it's 21st century storytelling. But I always felt the same principles like, you know, encapsulate your audience, have a hook, be direct, be specific, show, don't tell. Like, don't those kinds of principles, do you feel that they really translate well to video? And, and, and a caveat to that, or a sort of addendum to that question is, do you see writing like becoming less and less of a, of a thing? I dare I say that. You know, uh, gosh, uh, uh, hopefully I can kind of cover both of them. You know, I can <laughs> Sorry, all. I just gave you an essay. <laughs> Oh, I was just like, oh, oh no, where should I start? I got too excited. You get me excited, Dale. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. It's, it's Gord usually says he's just like, he gets a hold of me so he can get his energy fixed. Cause he's oh, just, man, I like, love it. He gets done. He's just like beaming. He's excited. So, uh, which by the way, I can't see the comments. I, I tried to pull up on my phone. Oh, I got it. I'm monitoring the good, comments. Good, good. Guys, so what's please up, leave Lord? your questions for Dale. Any questions, any yeah. comments, I'm monitoring it and I'll definitely pass them forward. Uh, so, Bree says, uh, I, oh, Bree says, no, nah, I still want books. I can't be alone on that. No, you're not, Bree. Go ahead. Yes, Bree. Thank you. Yes, I, I literally, I love to have technology and I love to see video and live video is great. Hopefully, let's just pick this little package of video up and we're going to set it off to the side. Sure. Let's go over to what I'm passionate about. It sure. is about reading. The thing that separates what you can see and experience auditori- or auditorially, oh, that was a bad <laughs> word. Well, I knew what, what you meant. That as, word? Soon, as soon as you said it, I knew what you meant. <laughs> yeah, but you know what we can hear and what we can see is great. But what you cannot beat when it comes to reading a book is this yeah. right here is the uh, ability for you to suspend your own disbelief. How many times have you heard uh, a movie that's released based on a book? People go to it and they go, "Oh, it's not as good as the book." Or oh, there's a the good time. reason, you ding dong. All the time. Because 
You recreated it differently inside your head than what somebody else is able to recreate it on video. There's no way anybody can compete with your imagination. Right. And if they beat your imagination, if you're like, oh my gosh, that was way better than the book. Like literally your imagination, it, it's stifled. There's something wrong with it or the writer wasn't that great. You know, so that's- Well that's said. So, you know, yeah, books are never going to die. And I'm telling you this, as I have probably 400 freaking like Kindle books on here, okay? The only reason why I don't have paperbacks anymore because I just got sick of the clutter. I just sold the stuff and I was like, ah, but I still love to have something in my hand. The texture, the smell, yeah. The, yes. That, yeah, that there's feel. nothing like it. <laughs> and there's that, 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 there's that sense of materialism. And this is why that yes. over 60% of the publication market, uh, it is coming from physical books, well over 60%. Everybody's chasing the dollar sign in the Kindle publishing industry. They're like, oh, eBooks, I make ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month. Well, that's all well and good, but you know what you're doing? You're, it's like you're going to the kid's table and eating the kitties. Like, oh, I'm gonna eat the French fries here on the kid's table. I'm over in the adult table, thank you. Thank I'm you. eating the paperback, I'm having the audio book, I'm having the translations. I'm going, I'm, it's an all you can eat buffet and everybody's welcome. But too many people are going over to the kids table going, Ooh, I got ten twenty thousand dollars per month on this. That's all well and good. You got me on a rant. I love it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, check, please. Check, waiter, check, please. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I, I want to say, I wanted to say something really quickly about the movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Cause I've actually even taught classes of literature into film. And I love what you said there about the imagination. Bree says, Bree says, I've been here for a few minutes. I love this guy. You already got a fan, uh, Dale. Ah, woo! Uh, Scott, good to see you, Scott. Scott says, great. Scott J. Marshall says, great to be here. Isaac My boy, says, dog dad. Yeah, Scott's in the house. Good to see you guys. Thank you. And please share this out if you don't mind. We would love for you to share this out. We want to get as many people who can check out Dale's amazing energy right now and amazing info. Isaac says, a great book and a good imagination, in my opinion, is better than a movie. Ooh, love that. Very nice, Isaac. Bree says, I love a physical book. I don't know you, book. Isaac, but I think that's awesome. Isn't that awesome? Bree says, I love a physical book, the smell, the feel, the ability to show it off. <laughs> exactly. <Very good. laughs> that material, that, 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 that possession that you can be able to share with somebody. Like, I can't tell how many times I'm excited about having Thank a you, book. Scott. And I go like this, and I share it with somebody, and they're like, yeah, yeah who cares? You yeah, know, whereas yeah. I take like a book like Brian G. Johnson's book, I share it with people. They're like, oh, they're flipping through it. And they're like, yeah. you know, no one wants to hold my dirty phone with all its germ and bacteria on it. And right. oh, look at this as I get all your nastiness, Dale. Thanks. Yeah. And my eyes get weary, man. I mean, I, I look at screens pretty much all day, all night. I'm sure oh, yeah. most people watching do too. It's nice to just peel your eyes off those dudes for a while and just go to a nice book or some reading, a nice physical object i like what you said the materialism in there um yeah. the only i think the i think i completely agree with you dale about the movie film transition uh yeah. the book film transition the only thing that i i always say this to my students i think the only movie that i can even think of and you're from my generation so you'll dig this mm -hmm. i think the only movie that outdid the book because i don't think the book was really even there wasn't that much effort put into the book shawshank redemption do you remember shawshank redemption yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I read the book because I'm a huge Stephen King fan. Actually, did you uh, actually think the book was fact. better than the movie? It was a short story. If you, it if was you a short recall, story. It was. Actually. It wasn't even called Shawshank. It was called something else, right? Like uh, oh, Reds. I don't remember something like Reds. Uh, Reds, because the main, like Morgan Freeman's character, Reds, the narrator, right? Um, mm -hmm. And and I don't want to get too into this because we could talk about this forever. Yeah. But I actually thought because I read the short story and I wasn't and I like Stephen King, but I wasn't crazy about the short story. And maybe, you know what, actually, now that I think about it, I saw the movie first. So maybe the movie kind of ruined it for me. I, I thought the movie was brilliant. That could be. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, but that's the I only time. I, I think that's a... the only time I thought, wow, I think that film actually outdid the book. It, that that is, a good, it is a good film. I won't lie that. Unfortunately, be, me being a diehard Stephen King fan, and also, I, I guess I've always been this way, that I always knew, even as a kid, that nothing could ever surpass my imagination. And I think that yeah. that comes from my upbringing. I had a wonderful mother that really encouraged my imagination and just said, you know, just let, let your imagination, she now more than ever is, you know, lets me just embrace who I am and embrace exactly how I, you know, how I feel. And uh, I, I guess that that's, I've never ever, you know, I, I see some people where they just leave me, oh, I, that movie's terrible, not as good as that. Like, I watched The Lord of the Rings. I read The Lord of the Rings when I was a kid. Um, 
two completely different animals. I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed yeah. the movie, I, yeah. but I didn't sit there going like, well. You can't really movie. compare them, can you? You just can't. You can't nah, compare I, them. It's not it's, even it's, logical. It's different entertainment mediums. Right. And this is where, let me take this off the shelf here. This is, we're going to bring video over. Video is exciting. Yes. Video, I'm going to go ahead and liken this, that it is a social occasion. It is social engagement. And more importantly, something that you've tapped into and something I'll be tapping into in the very, very, very near future, September 7th. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, blog. folks, on Nez Nation Live. <laughs> yes, not many people know this yet. Actually, I will be going live on YouTube. So, um, Oh, anyway, yes. I'm gonna, is, you got to let me know when you do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the notification for that. Can oh, you guys, everybody, everybody in the chat right now, just really quickly, Dale, everybody in the yes. chat right now, give me a thumbs up if you think Dale would absolutely capital C crush live streaming. Give me a I thumbs up. I thought you were up. going Watch somewhere them else. Everybody, Everybody's going like this. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're getting the angry face. I'm, I'm serious, Dale. Being, being somebody who's, who's been in the live video space for a little while now and somebody who talks to clients and actually people about this, I'm yeah. telling you right now, Dale, with your personality, your ability to articulate your vision and your purpose, dude, you would, you need to be on live streaming like yesterday. So September yeah. 7th, is that official? September 7th is official. Oh my God. That's so It'll cool. Be now what are you doing? 7th. I want to hear about this because I want to hear about, we're going to sure. talk about Kindle. We're going to talk about books. We're yeah. going to talk about, we're going to talk about uh, publishing and self-publishing, but I want to hear about this really quickly. Are you, because I know that you put a lot into your YouTube videos. There's a lot, yeah. there seems to be a lot more production than the average ordinary Joe, especially somebody like me. It is. <laughs> um, I kind of have the sort of um, get on there and just run with it. I mean, I very rarely do I do a bunch of takes. I'll do several takes, but not anything crazy and ordinate. I, I feel like I can kind of manage and for my style and my sort of execution, it just kind of works that way. So are you, are you going to be like, is there a theme or do you not want to share that? Is there like production value? Is there like sure, specific yeah, absolutely. topics? I'm curious. Um, well, so what I typically do when I go into self-publishing is I, I did a lot of studying. As you know, between our, our mutual group and Tube Ritual, uh, I learned a lot from some big names in Nick Nemen and Brian G. Johnson and Dan Brock, the Deadbeat Affiliate, which Dan Brock, love me some Dan Brock, man. Oh my, that, that oh, is yeah, he's good. Genius. The deadbeat affiliate. Yeah, the deadbeat affiliate. He's, he's, yeah, oh he's, he's got a niche and a half. I, I, I literally, like, I, I'm, I'm jealous. Dan, like, I love your gimmick, dude. That is just <laughs> so, good. like, and this is, you know, I, I just, I love his stuff. But uh, anyway, I went into it and see, I'd already watched quite a few um, YouTubers and I watched some of their content for self publishing, but there were some things that he just didn't like about their production, be it, um, I, I discovered this is a trend. I challenge you guys go watch the current big names, not me because you know I'm not huge. Watch the current big names in self publishing because they're doing self helpy type videos or they're doing affiliate marketing or they're doing anything but publishing. So they've just kind of abandoned this. And Interesting. I wanted to kind of get it to where I could provide a go to resource because I am an obsessive person. I like, I don't want to use OCD because I don't have a disorder, but I'm very obsessive. When I want something, I just go after it and I'm like a rabid pit bull. I will not let go. <laughs> Um, and that's the key. Yeah. So I wanted to get it to where I could still share that, that, um, that enthusiasm and, um, the comedy, we already kind of talk, I transitioned from the comedy to more recently. And when Brian G Johnson sent me a, um, a screener copy of his book, uh, he has within it the 30 day video upload challenge. Now it's not a daily upload. He's like, you know, just do it at your own pace. It's the challenge is to try to improve yourself as you go along. And me, I'm like, you know what? Um, I will do that. I'm like, why not? Let me try to see what I can do. Because here's the thing is, I come from the business of professional wrestling. I did it for a handful of years and I got to wrestle with some of the greatest names that are currently in the WWE roster and on the independent wow. wrestling scene. So I was an athlete and I was able to push myself beyond you know, boundaries, both physical and mental than I ever thought I could do. So to me, a video upload challenge, I go, I mean, it's not 2,000 squats for crying out loud. Yes, I could do 1,000 to 2,000 squats at a time I with believe no it. rest. And so that's, that's the thing is I think of this video challenge in that regard, and I love making videos. So I love asked it. about the whole love process it. of me doing it. What I needed to do was I wanted to find out what is 
the audience looking for? What are people looking for on YouTube? And I start to pick out how many views are here. What's the content that they're doing? What's the keywords? It's the same thing I use. It's called strategy, oh. right? Hello, strategy. <laughs> And, and the thing is, is I don't try to go fly blindly into it anymore. I was flying blindly before, but now I'm kind of like, I'm very calculated about it. I think we so, all did when we started out, Dale. I think we yeah. all flew blindly. I, I see some people right now that I just want to scream at them and go, have you put any tags? Have you done anything with your description? Like you're just throwing crap on YouTube. Like it's, it, it just doesn't work that way. But yeah, go ahead. They're, they're thinking, you know, I, I think a lot of people still believe it's like 2008, that they're going to be able to put a video up on YouTube and become an overnight sensation. Hate to tell you, ain't going to happen. The very few people that do it these days are unicorns. And, and I, I don't consider myself a unicorn. I would rather be a Delacorn. Maybe That's a right. unicorn slash pit bull. <laughs> yes. A hybrid. Go. A hybrid. A unibull. A unibull yeah, or a, a pitcorn? I don't want to say like, pitcorn. That doesn't sound good. Pitcorn don't sound good. That actually sounds like a weird fetish site. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> it does. We'll go with unibull. Hello. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> I don't so, know if that's much better. <laughs> uh, so let me ask you, Dale, are you going to yeah. do like, like, are you going to stick to that specific niche, which I think is so smart of like, streaming about publishing and streaming yeah. about DIY and streaming about the whole entire authorial book kind of arena. Yeah, I am going to be sticking to it oh, because it I is think that's such, great. It's gigantic and it's never ending. It was a conversation I had with my uh, mentor that I came into this business with and uh, it's Jason Brock. Jason's just a wonderful guy with it. I doubt he's watching at any rate, but I, I owe a lot to him. He really taught me a lot. Why isn't he watching? He should be watching. <laughs> he, he's got this weird thing about watching videos of people he knows in it. So like he literally like, I, I'll try oh, to show God, He's got like, like Tim Knox syndrome. Tim Knox never watches anybody's videos. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> oh, does he really? Okay, never yes, mind. Yes, yes, Sorry, he actually Tim. comes back and is, <laughs> he never watches mine. <laughs> Maybe there's a reason. Darn you, Tim Knox. Maybe we need to have a conversation. Oh, my, my eye went wonky there for a second there. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's the lens. Look at that lens. Okay, that looks great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, so here's how it works. Okay, you can see the green screen. Uh, yeah. I'm actually inside my uh, spare bedroom, which is our office. Right. And within the office, I've dampened up the walls with curtains and whatnot. And of course, I've got an entire wall that's completely green screen. And I set up the lights and I get it all set. So here's how the process works. I typically yeah. look up the subject that I want to talk about and I sit down and write it. Writing comes to me like nothing. I just did it, did it, it, and I get it all put together. Yep. There's a reason why I write a script and there, it's twofold. One, it keeps me on track. You guys can see already. Uh, it's people comment. Do I seem like I'm off the rails sometimes? <laughs> never, okay. never. It's, I would never assume that. <laughs> yeah. So we're, you know, there's no script. So yeah. I will have a tendency to go buck wild, whereas the script keeps me kind of reeled in. I've got a homemade teleprompter that I made out of oh, cool. board and a picture frame and duct tape. Literally, I take it, I tilt it down. I put my... Um, my Android up underneath this and it has like a teleprompter type thing and it just reads right through it and I just read along with it. So that way all I got to do is I go through and I jump cut. I take, I drop it on into Camtasia, pull out the green screen. I put my pretty little cartoon background. I put some sound effects. All in all, I discovered the other day, if I just do one video by itself, one five minute video this past week on my week in review, including time to set up the office, take it down because I can't leave it up. We're going to blame my wife on that one. She's okay. over in the other room. I can't, I can't throw her under the bus here. Don't say, but, yeah, don't, don't, you yeah, better whisper that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I put the lights away into the closet when we're not using it. And she has agreed to graciously help me take it out and put it back away for every time that we record. So with that Thank included you, dear. <laughs> writing and uploading over to YouTube and doing tags on it, it took me for a five minute video about two and a half hours. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. I can But it shows those, though, the quality shows though. It shows the, I thank think- you. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I wonder if you're going to do the same thing for live streaming, because what, what I would say, how I would advocate what's happening right now, especially in, if you want to get into video marketing, which I'm not crazy about talking about right now, but yeah. the idea of really what we want to do is encapsulate attention, right? As authors, as video creators, as marketers, what have you, right? We all want to encapsulate attention, yeah. right? What I've been finding is that the more production you put into your live stream, the more even like even having the sharpest fanciest gadgetry and i love gadgetry like i love it right 
like I've, I've found that people are more turned on or people are more, and I'd love your thoughts here, Nez Nation, you guys commenting, Bree, Gord, Megan, Sarah, good to see you. I find that the, the raw, the realer, realer, yeah, the realer and the raw, which those aren't even words, I don't think. It seems that's to okay. Be... I invented a word earlier, so we can go with raw. <laughs> We're inventing a whole language tonight, Nez Nation. <laughs> you know, I found that the attention and I found that people really responded well to that. What do you think about that, Dale? Yeah, you know, I, I really believe it, it's. it's like I, think that's ca- I think that's the opposite of your kind of execution. And I'm not saying that you need to change, but I think oh, it's no, interesting. No. Have you ever. Have you ever thought about this idea of when you scroll through Facebook and you see a shaky image, somebody on a phone or somebody on a device, have you noticed how it grabs your attention more than the polished? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's disrupting. Whereas a polished uh, product comes off more as an advertisement. uh, Yeah. It comes off as an advertisement and like, well, I can go back and see this. Whereas shaky cam footage, there seems like there's going to be there's something's going to happen. It's something that grabs me with Gary Vaynerchuk's video. Sometimes he'll just upload it with his, like, you know, his ugly mug on there. And I'll be like, Oh, I got to stop and watch that. Cause it looks crazy. Whereas yeah. if I see something really polished, but yeah, what uh, I plan on doing with the live format is I most likely will be running through OBS. Cause I already believe cool. it or not, I've actually done live video at one point, but unfortunately it was when I had a following of 60 people on YouTube. Well, so well, Brie was like, Brie was like, she couldn't believe it. Brie was like, he hasn't done it already. He hasn't done live streaming. Have, and I'm like, yeah. we got to see more Dale. I'm telling you right now, there's a reason why you see a lot of top dogs in the arena picking it up, you know, and I've been doing it for a little while too. I mean, just a little short while, a couple years. And I absolutely love it. I love the, the leverage. I love the reach. I love the connection, the engagement. I think it humanizes who you are. I think video is the three dimensional equivalent to the two dimensional page. You know, I think LinkedIn video just came out. I, I put I posted a video on YouTube about LinkedIn video, 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 video. And, and how this I think relates, if I may, uh, uh, oh, look at, look at Gord. Gord says, will Dale Roberts, will Dale Roberts, the Gary V of self-publishing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think he'll be, I think he'll be completely better. I think he'll be completely better. Bree says, I think YouTube along with Instagram is polished and perfection lead. Whereas live streaming and things like Snapchat, the people really like that rawness. And I think that goes back to what Gord said, Bree. Excellent point. Live stream or talking head video is not the same trying to produce a tutorial and style video, two different beasts. Yeah. What do you think about that, Dale? Two different oh, beasts. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, this is Gord, Gord and I, we're, we're really good close buddies. He's one of my, yeah, Gord's one of awesome. the people that has really helped me a lot. Me too. I, I give a um, big shout out to Gord Eisman. Gord's been a big help to me too. Yeah, yeah. Anybody wants help with, you know, really tightening down your brand and what you do in video content creation. Gord's the guy, man. And you know, he's you got a great him, new website too now. Great new website. Yeah. I, I'm leave that in jealous. the comments, Gord. Gord, leave your website in the comments in case anybody watching this on YouTube, this is going to be on YouTube too, or watching this here on Facebook in the replay, go check out Gord's website. If you have any interest in becoming a little bit more adept in any kind of sort of video creation, technical, you know, uh, production creation, that dude, he's a big help. Yeah. And there's a good reason why I've gone. And it's funny. I actually watched one of my videos from well over a year ago to what it is now. Uh, I'm telling you, you're going to see you're going to see Gord in my videos, like Sweet. in that literal sense, you see Gord. Okay. Let's look at the background. Hello. It's blue. <laughs> it's a Gord color. <laughs> I just love the way that it looked. And I, when I actually I had stumbled on it when I had this green background and I just happened to drop like a color um, uh, mask on it through Camtasia. And I was like, Oh my gosh, that's Gord's color. And then I just fell in love with it. So now it's actually, I, and Hopefully, Gord's watching this as well. Anybody else is watching it, you can look at the new branding because I actually changed the whole brand and the scheme and the layout over on YouTube to where it actually has that blue background. Just love it. But yeah, I'm going on and on about Gord. What was the original question? Okay, oh this God. is what I wanted to, yeah. So I wanted to transition. <laughs> so, so this live stream into, and you're going to be talking about DIY yeah. publishing. Yeah. And I wanted to talk to you. Why? My question was, why do you think it is that these like, publishing uh, experts and publishing, you know, uh, if you will, uh, uh, gurus in that space have, as you said, abandoned it and gone into like different kind of niches or, or, or almost just left it behind. Why do you think that is? Because my main question, Dale, is 
people want to know how do I, you know, become somebody who can place my ideas and thoughts on the page and get yeah. them out there. What would you tell people? And especially since, you know, we hear a lot about KDP and, 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 and that's Amazon Kindle, you know, direct publishing. And, yeah. you know, this has been going on for a long time. Oh. Um, is it too late? Is it not too late? Should people still be doing this or really going all in on this or is it changing? Man, that's a great question. Here's what I really want to say, and this applies to any, any walk of life, is, you know, does it speak to you? Mm. Because I've had some people that have asked me, is Kindle Publishing worth it? I'm like, well, what's worth it to you? I mean, you know, great point. if you want to make money, that's easy. I can show you a simple, simple way to make money. You know, that's, that's, that's simple. Okay. What I always try to really redirect people when it comes to, is this is this worth it? Is this going to make me money? You know, well, if making money is your passion, that's great. Get into stocks and trading. Okay. <laughs> that's great. You can make some money over there, but here's the thing is, are you passionate about it? Can you yeah. wake up out of a dead sleep and say, you know what? I want to get up and I'm going to pump out a couple of, a couple of books, you know, or I want to pump out 3000 words. A couple of books was a little bit of a stretch. Either way. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Hey, honey, you know, I'm just but... going to pop out a full few books. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to pop it out. That's what I do. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. smear feces <laughs> on, on a uh, piece of paper and put it out. Yeah. Someone's going to like it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. what erotica is? <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing is, is a lot of people ask me is, is now a good time. I'm going to tell you right now is a, better time than ever to do really? anything, anything. anything. Oh anything. yeah. See, that's the thing. A lot of people are like, Oh, I thought he was going to say self publishing. No, 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 no. I I'm done trying to force the square peg in the round hole. If you see that hole and you know, you can't fit through it. Don't go into it. Okay. Right. It's not for you. If you want to investigate, that's, I think where my YouTube channel comes into play where I give short bite sized bits three to five minutes long that people can watch. It's fast paced, it's energetic, it has some great upbeat music. People can kind of go, oh, okay, cool, they can check it out and they can <laughs> decide for themselves, is this right for me? Is this not right for me? Because I'm gonna tell you, you don't know how much more life you have on this earth. I could die right in the middle of this live stream, but thank God Knock I died wood. doing something I loved and I did something that I was yeah. passionate about and that I lived life to my fullest. And yeah. here's the thing is, don't chase after things just because it's for money. Oh, mm. I'm going to tell you, if you chase your passion and you really don't let up for a minute, the money's going to chase you. I promise you, you'll be able to live a lifestyle beyond your wildest dreams. And here's the other thing. I'm going to go to the other side of the spectrum. You ready for this? Okay. I'm ready. I see some entrepreneurs out there and there's some, even some YouTubers that hate on people that do nine to five jobs. Let me tell you something. There are people that love their nine to five. Yeah. Jobs. Entrepreneurship ain't for everybody. So well it's said. Publishing. Bravo. It's not for everybody. Well Man, said. My brother is passionate about, wait for it, handling meat at Kroger's. <laughs> hey, you know, to each his own. To each his yes. own. He, he loves to, to, to be, be in that, that line. And, and you know what? I was like, yeah, good for you, man. And he gets paid really well. He can yeah. chop my ears off, which by the way, he's as high energy as I am. No way. Um, Impossible. So yeah, that he can't chats be. me up on that. So that's, that's the other thing is some people just try to hate on the nine to five jobs. You know, don't be afraid if you really do truly, if you're passionate about your nine to five job, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You enjoy it and you be the best you that you can be because that's the most important thing. So self-publishing is now a good time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm telling okay, you, let me ask you this, Dale. Now. I, I love it. And guys, don't you love, give me some hearts, give me some lights. Isn't Dale's energy infectious? Don't you <laughs> love this guy? Barb says, Dale's, Dale's a hoot. I've not seen him in action before. Definitely YouTube star potential. I concur. Oh, thank you. So by the way, I have not put Dale's links in the actual description because when I go live from this format, it doesn't allow me to, but Dale is going to go back. Dale, you're going to do this. After yes. the broadcast is finished, maybe Gord could do this right now. Dale's going to go in. Come on, the Gord, comments. hook me up. Yeah, Gord, hook him up. Dale's going to go into the comments and he is going to leave. I want you, you have carte blanche, Dale. You can leave as many links as you want in the comments after the broadcast is finished. So if you guys want to go find where Dale is, 
you'll be able to find that very shortly. If Gord doesn't do it right now, Dale will definitely do it, or I'll do it after the broadcast, okay? Okay, now, I love what you said, Dale, about passion. And guys, if you have any questions, I'm here. I'm monitoring. <laughs> Barb says, getting out my tambourine. Bree says, happiness matters above all else. Gord says, yes. Dale's an energy igniter. Scott, DaleRoberts.com. Thank you, Scott. So, Dale, I want to ask you this. Let's say they have the passion, whether they're yeah. – somebody who just want you know, they've always had a dream to write a book and see it in print or see it, you know, published somewhere, or if they're a marketer or a business person trying to establish authority, let's say they have the passion. What yeah. would you tell them right off the bat before they even really, you know, get started? What would be the first couple of steps? Uh, for anybody that's just breaking into it is um, know what your end goal is going to be. That's going to be the very first thing. What do you want to get out of it? What is your end game? Okay. Because a lot of people just kind of, uh, they just throw things. Throw Wrong spaghetti. expectations, oh. right? Yeah. And they, they just kind of, they, they hope for it to, to stick. But that's going to be the thing is, is what do you expect to get out of it? Um, he, there's, there's so many ways you can start into this business. But if you have the ability to write a book, I would say that's the first thing. Just mm. focus on getting the writing process done. Okay. Right. If you're not a writer, then there are plenty of freelance writers out there that are oh, yeah. willing to either a ghost write for you or b assist you in writing your book. I mean, look at a number of athletes out there that have put out books. They didn't write that. Hello. They had ghost writers come in and help them out or they interviewed them and turned it into a book. So that's going to be the thing is get, and this is just usually just the first book. First book is always the worst book. And the hardest book to kind of do is um, actually writing it. Because I get some people that get so excited. They come to me like, oh, oh yeah, I I'm going to write about this. And oh, oh, I'm going to write about that. And I'm like, hey, 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 hey. You know what? Your, your talking ain't writing nothing. You <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, I'm like, just, just get it done, man. Don't, don't tell me what you're going to be doing 10 years from now. Cause I'm going to tell you this and see, I know this from experience. Okay. Because I'm a very self-aware person. I know, I know I'm high energy and I know sometimes my mouth gets me in trouble and my wife calls me on it. Okay. That's the thing is I get so excited. And before I used to go, I was going to do this book. 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 But first, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> you know, you've got to get that dang book written. So yeah, that's exactly. going to be the thing is. And <laughs> then and then start to look. I'm going to watch the, House of Cards first. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. House of Cards ain't going to pay the bills or get that book done. Get the book done. And here's going to be the thing to get it done. Okay. Set yourself a daily minimum. Okay. Mm. It can be a minimum word count. Yep. You don't know how to count words can be a minimum page count. If you are a slow typer and you do the chicken pecking type thing here for, for yeah. typing, okay, yeah. then set a time, time limit. Do you go right. five minutes per day, 10 minutes per day, 20 minutes per day? And habits, consistency, that is going to really get you ahead of the race. You know the story of the tortoise and the hare? Yeah. Okay? Be the tortoise. Right. Be the tortoise. You don't need to be the hare. Quit no. start. Stop worrying about. It was like Bruce Lee, I think he said once, I don't fear the man that has done a thousand kicks straight, but the man that has kicked once a thousand days straight. So Ooh. that's, that's the thing. Ooh, I paraphrase I that. Nice. Yeah, Dale. It's a beautiful thing. And so yeah. be that person who just practices one kick per day. It might not seem like much. And see, this is a, something I learned through fitness. When I was a personal trainer, that was what I really learned was those small habits every single day that start to add up over time. Here's another good one. Famous and iconic metal guitarist, Dimebag Daryl said that his father said to him when he was a kid, if you learn one riff a day, son, one riff a day, you'll be able to learn 365 riffs in the course of a year. That man became a pioneer in the metal industry and became a rock god. Yeah. Okay. And whether you agree with me or not, okay, the thing is, is he is highly acclaimed in the rock and roll industry for being an amazing guitarist. So be that person. Sit down, learn one rip a day. If you're going to do self publishing, write one word a day. It don't matter. Right. Small, consistent efforts. It might not like seem like it's much, but it's huge. I was sitting with my friend, Rob Archangel, uh, not too long before here. And um, he asked me how many books I'd published. And he's like, you've done millions, haven't you? And I was like, um, sort of. <laughs> I, I was like, not millions, but I was like tens of thousands at this point. Wow. <laughs> he's like, and I'm like, wow. Oh. I'm like, 
I don't think I'm exaggerating. I think that might be right. I'm like, really? Uh, I'm like, let me get back to you on that one. And see, that's the thing is four years. This is, this is my job. This is what I do. Mm. This is what I, I live, breathe, eat, sleep. And mm. I learned some things the hard way. I've learned a lot of things the hard way. And I've learned some other things just by getting out there and taking action. Something uh, that uh, my boy Scott actually hears me say, I call it the KSA method. My best buddy, longtime friend, Kevin S. Allen taught me something. And it was probably over the past couple of years. This guy says, okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bleep this one out. He says, F it, just do it. He yep. says, just do it. Just mm -hmm. get it done. He said, his belief is, don't worry about being perfect about getting things done. Don't yeah. worry about perfection. He's like, just go out there and make mistakes because you're going to learn from those mistakes and grow and become better. And there's a good reason why he's so successful in the business that he does is because he doesn't allow trying to be perfect or, or try to get all the greatest action plans set up and, you know, uh, yeah. oh, hang on a second. I need to go paint my toenails first. No. <laughs> Which is important, by the way. I want to get to a few comments. <laughs> this is great advice. So basically, if I'm understanding you correctly, Dale, I love what you said. Know what you want to get out of it and just do yeah. it. Execute, execute. Don't yeah, be sure. stifled by the fear of, is this the best thing, the perfect thing? Is this absolutely everything that I always wanted? Just do it, do it, do it every single day. I love this advice. Um, I wanted to get to a couple of questions. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. Good, good to see you, Gerald. Good to see you, Brenton. Um, yes, Bree says, consistency is really important. Less is also more in so many scenarios. Absolutely. Gord, I want to get to your question, but Bree had a really interesting question. Can you DIY publish a printed book? Wouldn't that be costly? What do you say to that, Dale? Not anymore. Uh, we're in a new age. And actually, I was just on the phone. Okay, I wasn't with Rob before. Actually, I was with um, a narrator I've used with uh, some of my audiobooks. Uh, her name is Pam Rossi. Big plug plug to her. Uh, she's a Michigan native just north of me here in Ohio. Um, and she had gone through the traditional publishing route where you pretty much buy a gigantic bulk like of paperbacks and yeah. you store it inside your garage and you just become the the warehouse okay right those days right. are gone i remember those have. days <laughs> yeah you put and, them in the trunk um, of your car and then if you ever go to like a conference yeah. or a symposium you're like here 10 bucks 15 bucks <laughs> yeah and, and you know that's that's all well and good i'm gonna tell you this um let me look here uh yeah i had to confirm i don't have a single one of my books single one of my physical paperbacks i've got I lost count, like just underneath my name alone, well over 40 different fitness publications and all of them have a paperback option. I think it's huge. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a gigantic market right now. Um, I'm going to tell you, was it Barb that brought that up? It was a uh, Brie. Oh, Brie. Brie, yeah. thank you. I'm Barb's sorry. got some great questions too though. Yeah, great. Go ahead. So uh, Brie, uh, you can do it yourself. And um, I don't want to tell you to be cheap, when you're trying to pursue this option, I just implore that you be frugal mm -hmm. and selective about how you put it out. Uh, I would advise to you, take a look at createspace.com. Createspace.com has yeah. got a great option. Yep. Um, they have many tutorials on YouTube. <laughs> Wait. And by the way, Gord, I don't know if Dale knows this yet. Gord has supplied all of the links thank to you, Gord. Uh, Dale's channel, his website. So thank you, Gord, for that. So those are in the comments, guys, if you're interested in finding out. And believe me, his YouTube channel on self-publishing is phenomenal. You get all amazing information and advice all for free on everything to do with self-publishing and all the kind of mechanics that go into it. So uh, I would definitely, definitely, yes, Bree says, good to know. I'd love to eventually do my amazing human blog series as a coffee table style book. Oh, that'd be a good idea, Bree. That's a brilliant idea. He actually idea. does a really cool live stream show where it's called the amazing human series and she it's really inspirational and she interviews great guests and she does a lot of cool stuff. Uh, uh, so yeah, but really nice, Bri. I think that's a great, great idea. Let yeah. me get to another question. If I may, uh, Dale, this is, this is great. Sure. We're getting a lot of engagement guys. Thank you so much for all your engagement, for your likes, for your comments, please. If you haven't already, or if you just feel like doing it again, go ahead and share this out. I won't get mad. Sharing is caring. Okay. Sharing is caring. I don't think Dale will get mad at you either. Barb says, um, does Dale have courses on Udemy, Teachable, or Skillshare? Dale, do you have any courses? I, I think you should. Have, uh, I do have a course called Self-Publishing University that myself and Jason Brock put out about a couple of, actually, 
been a couple, about a year and a half ago. It's still available. What um, platform is that on, Dale? It is actually on Thinkific. Oh, cool. I like Thinkific. Thinkific. Yes. Yeah. Um, but um, you know what? I already gave you a first. We're going to give another first right No here. way. We got two exclusives from Dale L. Roberts, folks. Two exclusives. Um, <laughs> I just want to say that right now I am in the midst uh, that I am working on a new, fully big program, okay, on do-it-yourself publishing. It's literally oh, going to be all nice. that. So stay tuned. Nice. Actually, Where channel, can we find that? That will be on the website for sure, right? That will be launching on October 1st. So nice. nothing is up. I'm just going to say verbally right now, October 1st is going to be the beta launch Beautiful. time. So the only way you guys are going to be able to get a front row ticket and the ability to get into the doors, it's actually going to be beta tested at that time. So we're going to bargain basement this so that way people can kind of come in there. They can say, I like this. I dislike this. And you're going to continue to see updated information. That's oh, the that's huge awesome. problem with a lot of self-publishing courses out there right now. You can go and buy a self-publishing course. But one of the things I noticed, someone brought up that um, on some recent self-publishing course that they got, they spent their hard-earned money on it to find out they were doing a tactic that is completely banned by Amazon. I was like, whoa, oh, that's no. not good. Oh, you no. Have have current information. <laughs> that's otherwise, probably not good. <laughs> cooked. Yeah. yeah, I was like, no, you got to stop doing that. He's like, well, why is he telling me that? I was like, probably because he's too busy trying to get you money. Yeah. I'm like, he probably hasn't cared about updating it. Right. And that's the thing is, I am knee deep in this. And here's something. I'm going to say this. I'm in this for the long haul. I am in this business because I love doing it and I'm going to continue to be doing it. I'm going to be doing it until this guy goes and picks up and he starts selling shoes on the corner, you know, or, you know, this guy's going to go over here and he's going to start his latest Shopify course. I'm going to be in self-publishing because that's where I plan on being. So you're going to be getting updated information. That's the most important thing because if I'm going to do it for my business, I'm going to recommend you do it for your business. And I'm not going to be sitting here telling these black hat tactics on YouTube, okay, and trying to lead by a poor example. I want to tell you exactly what I do, and hopefully it'll help benefit your life. So yeah, uh, oh, stay tuned. Awesome. October first for sure. Yeah. It's going to be launch date. It's going to be called DIY Publishing. Oh, you guys yeah, got to check that reason, out. So. Okay, let me ask you this, Dale, really yeah. quickly. And we got some great questions coming in too, Gord. I want to get to your question. Gord has a wrestling question. Uh oh. Uh, also, he has a. A uh, YouTube question too for business. So we're going to get to that. Thank you so much. Dale Roberts and Peter Nez inspire me. Yes. Thank you, Gord. You inspire us, brother. Thank so you, Dale, man. What is something that you can share with us in the Nez Nation audience that maybe perhaps a lot of people don't know about the kind of publishing industry or the DIY publishing game? Is there anything that just something that you feel this would be a really cool thing that you could maybe implement today or start implementing at least to really start to get yourself acquainted, familiarized, and progressing in the DIY publishing game. Is there anything like that that you can maybe share with us? Another yeah. exclusive. Uh, <laughs> this is the and, third exclusive. And that's <laughs> not all. <laughs> that's a challenge. Hey, Dale, I challenge you. A third exclusive. Third exclusive. Um, <laughs> no, but I mean, like, I, I maybe love I should do a song and dance. <laughs> you know, I love that you said passion. I truly, yeah. truly, with every fiber of my being, think that you cannot be good at something if you hate it. I yeah. also truly in every fiber of my being think that if you're not patient and you don't, if you don't really, I don't think you can actually put in the hard work if you don't love it. I think yeah. if you're putting in hard work for something just for, like you said, money, I think we, I mean, we really have parallel. I love this. We're vibing on a cool frequency, Dale, uh, because I really parallel all these thoughts. So let's, let's kind of maybe go to the next level after we've sort of, self-discovered this is what we want we understand our goals we understand our yeah. ideal avatar we understand that it takes long patient arduous hours yeah what can we do to really leverage this tool hmm. man that's that's a deep question you, can end up going, <laughs> you know what i just thought of right there i just thought of deep thoughts with jack handy yes deep. <laughs> oh yeah yes. do you remember that yes. oh, i did i actually i purchased the book years ago did you really <laughs> yes actually i remember i i purchased i bought it uh jack handy uh it was uh i was in driver's ed class and that was back in 93 three or 94. Oh, that's classic. Let me be more specific with my question. Yeah. I think my question's too broad. Yes, please. Let's say, let's say, okay, like for me, like I've got a few books on create space and, and KDP. Okay. There's, there's a sea of books out there, right? There's oh, okay. a sea of Amazon books. There's a sea of books from Barnes and Noble and Nook and everywhere else. 
what is a way for somebody like me, somebody who knows they love writing, somebody who's put in the work, somebody who has the passion, somebody who understands it takes long work and hard work. Yeah. What is something that I can do to differentiate myself from that sea of books? Maybe that could be a little, is that a little bit more specific? Is that better? That's better. I can, okay. I, that's something I can work with. Cause okay, they, please. It's such Thank a broad you. question before um, to be, to stand out above the noise. Uh, one of the things I always try to tell people when they are coming into the business is look at the successful people and model yourself. Don't nice. duplicate exactly what they're doing. Right. You need to bring what makes you, you, you need to bring, you need to put the you in unique. All right. Nice. That's, nice. that is literally what you need to be doing when you come into this business. And the other thing is, uh, don't expect to be the unicorn. Don't expect one thing just to, to, to finally take off. This business is about speed and frequency. Okay. Mm. It, there's a good reason why I've got so many books out because I consistently released at least one book per month. It's actually been over a year and I'm still drawing in money from all these things. So by the way, you know what? You said there's three, there's a third one for oh, you. Oh no, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. We <laughs> actually do have, I was totally kidding. We do January have a third exclusive. <laughs> Jan January 1st, I'll be releasing my next book. Actually will be uh, the home workout plan, body weight only edition. So it's nice be no equipment necessary. So that's really the brand. Are you going to help me get, are you going to help me Dale get a six pack? Because right now I have about three kegs. <laughs> I need, I need something better than this. <laughs> small, small things, small, small, small consistent, things. small, small, consistent changes, man. <laughs> small that small. was the best answer. Of, that was the most diplomatic answer. Of, you yep. basically called me a fat F without actually calling me a fat F. No, 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 no. That I was, was beautiful. Is, that was beautiful. Small, small, small steps. <laughs> small steps, small steps. Well, that's, that's the key, you know, and it's, it's just, it goes from business and it goes into fitness as well. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'll be releasing that here come January 1st because that, that right there is ideal time for oh, all that's awesome. publications. That is, that is my literally, you know, Christmas comes around. I see a decent spike in sales when it comes to fitness. But Ooh, that's a little hack. That's a cool little secret tip right there. There's a little bit inside. Oh, I like that. I like that. That's really cool. Um, so you're saying that's a really good time. Now watch everybody's going to mm -hmm. post and Dale's numbers are going to drop. <laughs> I, hey, you know what? I'm teasing. Here's, I'm teasing. I, you know what? You know what? I... I challenge you, okay? And this is well, not me this. being cocky. This is not me being arrogant. I challenge yeah. you to come into the fitness in, in the field and I want you to come over and knock me off my horse. I want you to come in there and I, I want it. you to be heard above the Christmas Abbots, the Jillian Michaels, the Michael Matthews. I want you to get into the fitness industry. Why? This world needs it. The yeah. world needs better health and fitness. And here's the thing is, some people don't like me. They don't no, I know. Impossible. Crazy, right? That's impossible. But that's the thing is so many people think, well, okay, and this is great. This kind of ties into, you know, being unique and being you is not everybody's going to vibe with my message. Okay. Yes. I get some thumbs downs on my video. I love it. I'm kind of like, bring it. Uh, you're, you might find this a, hard to believe, Dale. You might find this hard to believe, but some people actually don't like Professor Nez. What the heck? <laughs> By the way, if any trolls happen to be watching Professor Nez's videos, we love thumbs down too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody give us a thumbs down right now. <laughs> so here's the thing is I can be the only person putting out fitness books and I could be crushing it and killing it. And the thing is, there's going to be someone in the world that opened up my book and is like, I don't like this bald guy. And they give up on fitness and I don't want that. I don't want that because someone somewhere needs good health and fitness in their life. Why? because then they can be able to have a better quality of life. And I would hate, 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 hate for that message not to get to them because they didn't vibe with me. Yeah. So you could be watching right now. So I want you to get in the fitness industry. I implore you to get into the fitness industry and I want you to make a difference in the world if you happen to be doing that. So that's why I say I'm not being cocky. I'm not being arrogant. My message isn't for everybody. So that's where you come in. That's right. where your uniqueness that you can bring out and share with the world can really change and make a huge difference. I can't tell you, man, that so many times, and oh man, it gives me goosebumps, <laughs> that I get emails from people. It, it, it blows me away. Some people that talk about, I lost this many pounds because of your book. Oh, yeah. I, this changed my life. Isn't that the had, best feeling ever? It's, it's so it's wonderful everything. to know that. And it's everything. I, I'd hate to think that I didn't at least try. Yeah. So don't you pass that opportunity. Be 
the 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 uh, the change in the world that you want to see be the yeah. change in the world you want to see because that's going to be the thing so bring it that's what i got to say is just bring it let's yeah. do it <laughs> get on in there you heard Shoot. it here first nes nation he's challenging us he's challenging so, us yeah. nes nation it, it may not be fitness it, it could be self help it could niche. Yeah. um it, it could be even an inspirational coffee table book yes. yes yes please by the way by the way that's an even more competitive niche. Self-help is, is really, but I'm telling you this, if you've got a real message, something that can make a huge change, don't hold back. Nice. I, I want to see not just one coffee table book. I want to see over the next couple of years, I want to see two, if not three, if not four, if not 10, if not 30, if not 50, keep them coming because someone out there in the world is going to open up your coffee table book and tears are going to flow down their, their, their cheeks. And they're going to say, you know what? This has changed my life. And seriously, if you can make one difference, one person, you've made the world a better place. Absolutely. Wow, what a message. I almost feel like clapping right now. That was beautiful, Dale. Very nicely said. You, it's, very, it's very rare that you find a fellow writer, a fellow author, that just has such a, a, an unbelievable uh, presence, right, and personality and persona that just really, really translates well into video. And I'm telling you, Dale, I think this is, this is, this is really, I think it's unprecedented. You know, I mean, the kind of stereotypical writer, sort of, you know, recluse, sort of loner, you know, and, and I, I feel like that sometimes at, at, at moments. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but I love what you said. I, I, I mean, I, I really truly believe that like solitude is a gift and I need to go into that space to really kind of, like my creativity lives in that kind of that tranquil solitude, mm -hmm. but like, I love creating video. I mean, I, it, it's something that it just burns in me. It makes my chest want to explode. I feel like a locomotive like you, like I love your energy, Dale. I'm telling you right now, man, we need a weekly live stream from Dale Roberts. We need a scheduled live stream and just keep those videos coming because your persona, your vibe, it really comes through amazingly well. Yes, Bree says you are super duper. Uh, Bree says I'm getting married, so I need that book. Absolutely, Bree. Gord says go. now I feel better about being me in my video based on Dale's fitness example. You know, Absolutely. Gord's lost. How much weight have you lost, Gord? Gord looks amazing. Did you yeah, help Gord him with that, Dale? Or was no, that Jamie? that's all I think Gord. Jamie. Yeah, yeah. Gord started all that before we had even met, and uh, he continues to keep pushing along. I always love hearing. Uh, how he does on that and uh, every now and then he'll let me know when he's going to the gym so that, that i'm really pumped for him gordon gord keep on oh wow friends. gord just said 25 pounds congratulations barb don't you love dale barb barb says i love the energy great for <laughs> sassy seniors lol <laughs> yes barb you're not a sassy senior you're a sassy minor and you know it um man i just got to tell you you know what's really funky dale let me tell yeah. you something it is we're at the 59 minute mark yeah check it out I literally feel like we've been talking for 15 minutes at the most. Scratch the surface, man. Like, that's, dude, that's the thing. I, we need to have you on the show again. Like we have to have you on the show again because we, I don't even feel like we've even scratched the molecule of the surface of everything that we can cover and we can talk about. I want you to close the show out, and especially with your energy and your gusto. I want you to close the show out. Tell our Nez Nation audience, what is the one thing you want to leave our audience with? What is the one thing that, get to the core of the core of Dale. What message, what purpose, what anything. It can be funny too. It can be comedic. What is it, what is it that you want to leave with uh, the Nez Nation audience before we start to kind of sign off here? Uh, signing off, um, definitely want to kind of double back around. You can start anticipating every Thursday starting September 7th at 6 p.m. I will be running live streams on YouTube. You got to subscribe. Oh, you have so to looking forward to that. Off. Um, I don't know how long I'll run the streams. It just depends on the, um, the social factor. If people are engaging, if people are asking questions, cause if I don't get any questions, I'm not gonna sit here and stare at the camera cause I can do that and edit it. But, uh, let's close this out <laughs> and let's close this out on a good note is, yeah. um, Nez nation. Let me just address you guys all here on this. Um, I, I'm not special. I'm not any different. I'm not a unicorn. I'm just like you. Okay. I've, I've had to eat ramen noodles and frozen vegetables for months at a time. And I've also got to eat extravagant five-star meals. I've gone from one end of the spectrum to the other. 
I've been crippled up because of a severe debilitating back injury. And I've been in peak physical condition that was just unparalleled by anybody. But that's the thing is, that's not special. That's exactly what you guys are. So when you watch videos, like from me, or if you watch videos of somebody else, they're not better than you. We're just like you. We're all in this together. And so why don't you just do this? If you got something in your heart, don't hold back. Chase after it and don't stop until you get it. And then when you get it, you better be chasing after something else because I'm telling you, that's part of the fun is the chase. So with that being said, Awesome. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dale Roberts. What an amazing, I just want to say on behalf of the Nez Nation audience, this has been a, just a dynamite show. I don't know where the time went. <laughs> I mean, I literally, I thought I was going to click on the timer and it was going to say like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm just sh absolutely shocked. Thank you, Bree. Thank minutes. you guys. Thank you, Gord. Thank you, Barb. Bree says, wow, so incredibly glad I caught this live. Thank you so much, Bree. We really appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, this is unbelievable. Those of you watching on the replay and those of you even maybe watching right now, share this out one more time because I'm telling you, if you want to be inspired, if you want to understand what it takes to be a creator in the 21st century, using video, perhaps going into the written form as well, and just really fighting those times where you doubt yourself, man, I can't think of a better show. I can't think of a better broadcast. I, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, Dale, somebody who really loves and really is congruent with your ideas and thoughts and really echoes all these sentiments. I mean, yeah. absolutely good stuff. Um, thank you, my friend and everybody watching. Thank you so much for watching again. I'm your host, professor Nez and every single Friday, Nez nation live 7 PM Pacific, 10 PM Eastern. We're going to keep bringing it. And I hope to God to see you guys there. Don't forget this. Okay. You guys, Dale Roberts saying, go out there and get it. Thank you, Nez Nation. Have a wonderful Friday. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.